Hey everybody, welcome to my channel and today I have a tutorial for the little monster book that is part of my Friday Night Fright series and I'll put a link to that below and uh, please check out my Halloween playlist where you'll find all of the events for the Friday Night Frights and as well as the Halloween projects that I've made in the last couple of years. So um, anyway, uh, we're going to learn how to make the pages and, and do the binding on this album. So you're going to need five pieces of a coordinating cardstock. Uh, and obviously I used black on this one. And um, I'm going to be, for the one I'm making today, I'm going to be using ivory. But this is just my sample cut paper and score paper. So you're going to cut each of those five papers at 10 and a half inches on one side. So you'll have 12 by 10 and a half sheet of paper. You're going to put that 12 inch side along the top of your scoreboard. And then you're going to go ahead and score that at six inches. So right down the middle there. You're going to turn it over a quarter turn and then flip it over okay and so then you have your original score line right here you got a little bump there where you scored it um, so I'm going to score at five inches here and I'm scoring at ten inches here and I'm going to flip it over because this is the side that my little dents on and I like to fold into those dents and I am going to take this um, 10 inch score line which created this little half inch um, flip and I'm going to fold that over and I'm going to take my bone folder and really give it a nice tight fold. So I'm just going to cut an angle on each side of that middle score line. Um, and make little, it will be a little V when I'm done, and that will divide those two sections there. And I'm going to go ahead and angle the edges here as well. And so this makes a little flap where we can uh, glue our pocket down. So now I'm going to have it facing this way so that I have this middle score line right in front of me and I'm going to cut down the middle up to this bump here up to that that score line that's in the middle there I'm going to cut just a little a little teeny bit off that edge And I'm going to flip it over because I'm right-handed just to get this other side. So I'm really just kind of cutting that score line off. So I'm just going just to the edge of that, just a little teeny bit. And so you can see I have a little bit of a gap there. And that's what I want. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one side and fold it up here. And so now that I'm seeing that it's lined up, I'm going to go ahead and take my bone folder and straighten that out. I want my pocket to be as deep as it possibly can be, so I'm going to just put a very thin line of glue on the edge here. Okay, so now you're just going to do the same thing on the other side. So now you have something that looks like this, and you have these little openings here in the middle, and believe it or not, those are our side pockets. So what we need to do is just to flip this over, and you have your little bump here in the middle, and that's where you're going to fold your page over. OK, 
Okay, and I'm just gonna fold that over and I'm just gonna burnish that, that glue in there. And then when we folded the entire page over by just gluing it on the bottom there, then we created this top pocket. So in one signature, you have room for um, one, two, three, four, five pictures. And then if you do what I did and make the little booklet that goes in the top, that's, that's another six pictures, right? So one signature hold, will hold quite a bit. So I've made all of my pages in the ivory cardstock. Now I'm going to show you how to create the hinges. So when you cut your pages at 10 and a half inches, you would have these one and a half inch strips left over. So you're going to take those strips and just cut them at five inches. What you're going to do is you're just going to score at a half an inch this way and then flip it over and score at a half an inch and then do that with all of those and that will be your hinges. All right, so go ahead and burnish those folds. I like to fold in on the bumpy side. Okay, so now you have your hinges. So I forgot to mention here in this part of the tutorial that not only do your pages have to be, um, you want all these pockets facing the right as you're putting them on your hinges, but you also need to make sure that they're flipped so that this opening is all on the same side so that you have all of these on what will be the top of your album. And you're going to take your first hinge and making sure your pockets, the openings on the right side here, and you're just going to glue that down. And so I'm going to flip this back over and flip it to the other side and make sure my openings are on the right. And I'm going to go ahead and Okay, so now for this part, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be gluing my hinge on top of that page there. I think I'm going to have this so it's folded, so the fold's right here on this hinge, and I'm just going to have it like that. And then I'm just going to put my hinge right up against that that page there so I'm just gonna put the glue on this side okay so now I've got the other hinge on and now what I want to do I'm gonna flip it over again and make sure that my pockets to the right and we're going to go ahead and glue this one on. Also make sure that all your top pockets are all facing the same way as you're doing this. And I have my two pages on. So Anyway, we're just you're just going to continue doing that until you get to the last page. Alright, so that's all there is to um, binding your album, but what you're going to do is you're going to hold your album up like this, make sure this is flat, and you're going to measure this. So my album measures two and a quarter inches from side to side, so I'm going to cut my design paper just slightly less than 
two and a quarter by five inches tall. So I've also cut my design paper just slightly less than five inches also. And um, I just think, I just don't want to take the chance that it's going to overlap um, the hinges there. And then also for this, I think it's better to use tape rather than glue um, because it really needs to stick to those. It's going right on the back of the hinges and it really needs to stick there. And then also um, my hinges run this way, so I want the tape to go across this way. All right, for some reason, uh, the next part of uh, putting my album together just did not record. I don't know what I did. Um, so anyway, you can see that I taped my paper across the hinges there. So I just laid my album like this. And so this was flat and I just um, taped that paper onto the top of those hinges. Um, and then you just want to burnish that in really well and just make sure that's really nice and snug on there and then just leave it for a minute. Let that just stick on there for a little while before you move to the next step. So the next step would be putting the, do the outer part of the spine and to do that you're going to need a piece of uh, um, cardstock that is five and a half inches wide by five inches tall. And you're going to score at one and five eighths. And then you're going to score every single hash mark or every single score line until you get to four inches. And so now what I do is, um, I don't know how to describe this on top of my table, but um, I'm just going to take this tray here and imagine this is the edge of my table. Table. I'm going to take this paper and just kind of run it like that. Um, and because it's my table's deeper, it'll just get that nice curve there. So I'm going to do that. And then once I um, glue the top paper on, I'm going to do that again and just curve that paper on the edge of my table. Now, all right, so this is where I started having trouble with my album and I'll explain that now. Um, so I tried to cover the entire spine with design paper. Now the main problem with this is that this paper has that coated um, glossy on it and it just did not want to curve it didn't want to uh, bend and it didn't want to stay down on the edges so I did try it on this album with this paper to see if it would work any better and it does but still I'm just not 100% sure over time those edges are going to stay down and so I think the top and the bottom are okay, but the sides I'm not too sure about. So what I think needs to be done is that the paper should be cut in the center with an offset like you see on this album here. So at the end of it all, you're going to cut a piece of design paper that is four and seven eighths tall and just a little bit less than two and a quarter. And so I'm just going to have to kind of demonstrate how I glued this on because obviously I've already put my, my spine piece on this album and I'm not sure why this didn't record earlier. I think someone was at the door and I forgot to turn the camera back on. Um, thank goodness I caught it before I finished the whole tutorial. But anyway, as you're wrapping things around, if you've ever wrapped a label on a jar or a can, you know that if it's a long straight label that as it curves around the jar doesn't want to be um, straight. And so sometimes that's kind of how this is when you're curving this around the spine. So just keep that in mind when you're gluing 
the one side down that you have to just really make sure that it's it's even all the way across to the other side so um, I just like to line mine up there make sure both sides are even and and you can even just clamp that down in place on on the side you're not working with and then you're just going to put glue on this part here and adhere that down to the one cover and <clears throat> and then you're going to add adhere the glue on this side and just attach that to the other cover like that so you never ever are putting glue or any kind of adhesive on the center part here that's what creates this floating hinge and that's what keeps our album soft so that as we open the pages it has that movement there and the pages lay flat. So I'm going to go ahead and create all of my little tag booklets and so I'm going to be cutting this paper at five and a half by 10 inches, which is what I've done here. So I've got five and a half by 10. So I'm going to go ahead and score this and I'm going to score this at five inches. And on these top tabs or tags, I used um, the large size corner rounder and I can only do one layer of paper at a time with this. Okay, so the design paper for these top tags should be five and three eighths by four and seven eighths. So my side tags measure four and three quarter by five and three quarter. So I'm just going to make sure that this one fits my booklet. Um, sometimes things can be a little different from book to book. And um, the design paper is four and five eighths by five and five eighths. And for your pages, um, they're all the same size, so they are five and seven eighths by four and seven eighths. Now, there's two ways you can go about doing some of these pages that have this four inch strip. You can cover the entire page with design paper, then add your strip. And the strip is four inches tall by five and seven eighths. On some of these, you can do it like I did it. Um, I was worried about running out of paper on some of these pages, so this one in particular, I cut a piece of two pieces of paper that are five and seven eighths by let's see about three quarters of an inch, and then I just glued those top and bottom, and then I glued the four inch strip um, across the middle of that. Um, that way, then I didn't have to waste all that design paper that would have been in the middle there. Yeah. So I thought I'd quickly go over some of the elements on the pages and give you some measurements. So starting with the cover, I had two journaling cards that were identical, and I glued the first one down on the page here, added the rickrack trim, and then I adhered the spiderweb sticker from the sticker sheet. And then on the second identical card, I fussy cut this piece out. I mounted it onto craft foam and placed it on top of the first. And on the spine, uh, I did mention earlier the difficulty I had with the spine. And so I ended up having to um, cover that with some grow grain ribbon and glue that down really well. Um, and then I decided I wanted more and so I added this polka dot ribbon and I wrapped it all the way through the spine there. I don't know if you can see that. And then just tied it in knots here. And then a lot of my stickers throughout the album I have mounted onto um, 
black cardstock and then fussy cut them out and glued them to the pages and whatnot. So I won't go every single go through every single sticker, but just so you know, that's what I did. And then this is just one of those journaling cards on top of the page here. And if you have any questions on any of the trims that I used and where I got them or whatever, um, just leave in the comments below. I don't think I need to go over every little thing I put on the pages. Um, so on the pocket here, I just took a strip of the um, leftover paper from cutting the pages and I just cut it a little bit less than six inches and then I um, cut it to one and three eighths and then the design paper is one and a quarter by five and seven eighths and then of course I just glued it on like you would a, a simple pocket and this sticker is popped up with craft foam this card is mounted onto black cardstock at three and an eighth by four and an eighth and I just rounded all the corners. I used my medium corner rounder for um, these little tags and whatnot. On my side tags and my um, top tags I, I used the large corner rounder and I don't know that's just what I did. Um, this is another little card here that I trimmed down to two and a quarter mounted it onto black card stock and of course rounded the corners and cut my little angles there and this is just a sticker that I mounted onto black card stock and I just glued it up here for a tuck spot this is five by four inches This sticker here, I actually mounted onto a thick card stock and did fussy cut the whole entire thing. It took a while, but I really wanted that dimension on there. Um, I don't always like my stickers flat on the page, so I thought that was a nice touch there. And then this is just one of the border stickers from the sticker sheet. And these uh, two stickers are layered together, and then I popped them up with foam and added my little twine and this element here I'll talk about at the very last uh, this tag here is oops, three by four and a half and I've just layered some stickers on there for a cute little scene there And of course, I've added the little bow here on my ghost. And there was in white the letters boo across here. And I wanted to add my little glittery boo. And I could still see some of the white lettering underneath. And so I took my, um, and I don't have it handy here right now, but I took my brush, black brush marker and went inside the areas there and just touched that up with the marker to cover up the white. And so I thought I can't, I, I've forgotten I'd done that because it, it just looks like it was meant to be there. And then here I have one of the cards that I've mounted onto the black, just like the first one that I did and just glued it onto the left side here to make a tuck spot and then popped up these stickers that are backed onto the black paper. Got my Alice Halloween bear. And this sticker here, I just mounted onto a piece of craft foam and added my ribbon to make it look like a county fair ribbon. And then I only glued it onto the top here um, so that I can still tuck my, my photo up inside there when I'm ready to glue down a photo got some purple polka dot trim here along the edges so this is just the back side of one of the journaling cards and then here I have just glued on the sticker from the sticker sheet but it was just too wide to fit across this six inch page and so I'm not going to tell you where I cut it and glued it back together so I the reason I don't want to is because I want you to see that 
you really can't notice those things unless you're really, really looking. And so anyway, little trick there. And this photo mat is three and a quarter by three and a quarter. And I have layered these stickers together. So the little pumpkin's just slightly behind the Frankie and I popped them all up. And this was done in the same way as the front cover. I used the two identical cards, except this one is mounted onto a heavy duty card stock rather than the crack foam because I wanted to, uh, I didn't want it super bulky. Um, and then I just popped this uh, sticker up here. I've got some black um, glittered velvet trim on the top and the bottom of that card. And that's it. <laughs> so now we'll talk about uh, creating your little um, fold out right here. So I've decided not to create this element on my ivory album. I just don't know that I have the same uh, types of elements to do that. So I'm just going to be using a piece of scrap paper that is the same size as the page there. And I'm going to be using this little crap piece of paper as the fold out. So you're going to need to cut a piece of crap paper that is six inches by four inches. And the reason I cut it that is because you can notice that I do not have an offset on the boo card. Um, because that was all black, I just didn't think I needed to do that. So um, I just left it at the size, but you do want to measure the size of your card because not all cut apart cards are exactly three by four. Sometimes they end up a little smaller or whatnot. So make sure you measure your card before you cut your paper. So you're going to score the paper at three inches. Um, I ended up not scoring this. I ended up just folding it by hand and um, and getting that card ready. And then also I did forget to round the corners. So you wanna make sure that you're rounding the corners of your little card if you want to. So the first thing I need to do is determine where the magnet's going to set on the page. So I want it to be about a fingertip from where my card opens up. And it's going. I'm going to measure from the right side of the page. So that's gonna end up being two and a quarter inches and that's where I'm going to place my magnet. I'm just going to eyeball it from top to bottom. Now that that magnet is on then I can cover this with design paper. Okay, so now we have the backing paper, which would be this jack o' lantern paper on our page. And now I can go ahead and um, center this, and I'll just eyeball it, and then line this folded edge up to the edge of my page. Also, because I'm making this a pocket, you'll notice that I'm only gluing on the top and the bottom edge and on the fold line of the card. And then I usually have a piece of tape backing and I put that there under where the magnet will go. And then I use my glue again and I usually use the tacky glue or whatnot. So then I close that up and hopefully that magnet gets glued to the the paper there. I usually let that that dry a bit together to the paper for just a few minutes. And then I'll lift up this tape backing so that and usually that's dried for a few minutes so it stays in place. But I lift up that tape backing so that my magnet um, lifts up with it and doesn't rip apart from the paper with the glue. And then I'll just go ahead and tape it down. And then I'm ready to put my um, design paper here. So then you have room for like a little uh, three inch 
tag there. So that's how I created that page. Now let me show you how I created the, the tabs for the side tags. And for that, we just need a piece of scrap paper. First, I took a piece of design paper and I punched the tab with my tab punch. And it can be any punch that has both sides that you fold over. And again, it doesn't have to be this particular punch. I know this was out of, um, they don't make them anymore. Um, and then just go ahead and fold that in half. And then what I do is I just, um, I kind of try to get that curved ed edge on the side there and I just cut that in half. Um, then I take my tag and I put I fold a piece of black paper in half like that and I take my tag and I just go ahead and I took my design paper and I just glued it on there. Make sure you got a little bit of an offset on the top. And I usually like to use my smaller scissors for this. So I'm just going to cut this out roughly so it's not so much to work with. And then I'm just going to go ahead and fussy cut my black paper that's folded. So once that's cut, then I just glue the other piece of design paper on the other side. Um, as far as the spacing of the tabs, I did three um, different spaces. So um, this first tab is at the top and I just pretty much went to the edge of where it curves off there on the corner. Um, and then this one I centered in the middle of the, the tag. And then of course the bottom one, uh, I did the same as the top, just went to the edge right before the, um, the tag curves on the corner there. So the last thing we have to talk about are the gussets and they are 3 eighths of an inch wide by 4 and 7 eighths inch tall. And if I can, I'll be a little OCD on this. So I actually matched the design on at least one side of the page. So you can see these dots are lined up here. And of course, this is just solid. It doesn't matter there. And I really wanted to match these stripes, but I didn't have a piece long enough. So I'm not so OCD that I'm going to cut a whole another piece of paper to match that. But... <laughs> But I did have a scrap of green that mat that lined up along with this one, so that's what I did. And and this um, this paper here lined up here, so I was just using scraps. So, um, but I like those little details, and um, of course you don't have to do that. And I'm sure any scrap paper will work, but that's just what I did. So anyway that's it I think we've I've talked about everything there is to talk about if I've missed anything please let me know in the comments and I'll answer your questions so let me know what you think do you like this style of pages would you make, create them again do you like the floating hinge so I'd like to hear your feedback in the comments below and uh, don't forget uh, to join me on Friday nights make sure you're notified by hitting that little notification bell there and a thumbs up would be greatly appreciated so i'll catch you on friday thanks for watching bye